So I have a really unique and to me exciting video for you today. So I hope that this is exciting for you. This paper is called Swarm Based Attention Mechanism for Sequence to Sequence Models. And as you can see, I'm the author of this particular paper. And so diving into this very specifically, what I have done here is I have created a attention mechanism, a swarm based attention mechanism specifically for seek to seek models or encoder decoder models. Um, and then to my knowledge, this is a 100% novel implementation of a swarm based uh, attention mechanism that has never been done before. Uh, and then so just diving into this, I am excited to showcase this and I'm excited to showcase especially the results. <laughs> the results have, are, are better than I expected. Um, and then so uh, diving into it, the research paper that I have here, I'll, I'll, link, I'll leave a link to it. I, it includes all of the math, exactly how I came up with this uh, and exactly what it is doing within here. And then also some comparisons between the standard attention mechanism and exactly what is going on with this swarm based attention mechanism. And with that, I want to spend a majority of the video here um, in this notebook. And then so all of this runs uh, in a Colab notebook. I have it connected to T4, so I'm running GPU. A free GPU. And then so very first thing I'm doing is just importing libraries and then uh, checking if the GPU is available, if CUDA is available. If not, it'll run also on CPU. And then so it's saying using device CUDA because it's available. And then the next thing that we're doing is we're creating a, a data set. And then so this is going to create a thousand link data set and it's just random numbers. Like that's all it's doing. Like we're creating a, a random, like a uh, like random matrix of numbers of a thousand numbers. And then we're going to define our swarm attention class. Uh, so this is where all of this comes in. And I did a lot of uh, playing within this. So within a normal swarm algorithm, one of the problems is, is that it converges very quickly. And then so what that means is if I train it for five epochs and I trained it for 50 epochs, it's essentially the same result because it'll it'll come to what it thinks is the optimal solution and then it won't expand upon there. And then so that's kind of like a big problem uh, normally with attend with uh, swarm algorithms. And then so I set out specifically to fix that. And so what I did is I just inject like a whole bunch of noise and I tell it to like never settle on local optima basically. Uh, so you can see Gaussian noise and then a bunch of other stuff that I put in there. That's all that, all that I do to make sure that it's not hitting that uh, uh, problem that is common with swarm algorithms. And then we have to define our encoder and our decoder, which are very straightforward, right? So these are just a uh, standard like a run optimizer and standard your standard um, C, uh, encoder and decoder mechanisms. And then we set our hyperparameters too. Uh, and so in this first instance, uh, we're setting an embedding size of 32, 64 hidden layers, number of agents five, batch size 32, and then we're training for five epochs with a training a loss rate of 0 0.001. Just, very straightforward, we're just initializing our model, right? And then so uh, then we'd want to prepare our data set that we would normally. Then we want to load our model to train it. And then now we're going to train our model. And then so this is running for five epochs. And then this is just our normal, normal training class. And we can see here, this is all expected, right? So we have a, uh, we start off with a loss rate of 3.05, and then it drops down to 2.4. Pretty good. It, it, like, uh, we want a loss rate of less than one. Less than one equals 90 percent, right? Uh, and then so the lower the as the loss rate goes up, accuracy goes up. And then as loss rate goes down, accuracy goes up. And then so with the loss rate of one, we get an accuracy of around 90 percent. We're never going to get an accuracy of 100 percent, right? And then we don't want a loss rate of below about 0.5 or so, so about 95 percent accuracy because it's overfitting to the data. And then um, this is just getting a relation function. And then now we're just testing. Uh, so this is uh, the result, right? So what we did is we created a number generator. And then so we have 5, 20, 16, 14, 14, 18, 18, 4, and 7, right? And then so the model is supposed to predict these numbers. And then uh, uh, this is its guesses. And you can see it, like uh, it's pretty bad, right? It's kind of okay in the middle there. Uh, and then this is a kind of just a quick visualization of it. Like, it's bad. It's bad. Um, way to, to represent this. And then so let's go back up here. And then so how we adjust this, right? And then just showcasing this is we adjust these parameters here. So I'm going to put a number of agents 50. I'm going to put a number of epochs 50. And then uh, why not? I'm just going to, you know, generate a new data set. I don't have to run all even sequence again because uh, it's been a little bit of a while. So, because it takes a second. 
this one added. And now it's run. And then so this is going to run for 50 epochs as opposed to five. So this is going to run a lot longer, but not a whole lot longer, right? So 3.05 and then it's going down. And then the first, first thing I want to showcase is how quickly these epochs are going through as opposed to a standard attention mechanism. If you're familiar with the standard attention mechanisms, you would not, not be expecting these epochs to be flying through like this. <laughs> and then uh, we can see our loss rate is converging, right? We just hit below 0.9, uh, below 0.1. Uh, and then so we're going to end up around like 0.75 or so. So like this is going to be a really good loss rate. Um, and then so let's see what happens uh, as a result. Uh, we, again, we changed two things within this, right? So let's like take a look. This is really <laughs> garbage, right? Uh, and then like let's update. Uh, and we can see this is a whole lot closer. Uh, just with that, those two things, all of a sudden our chart and our graph looks amazingly better. Right, but we can improve upon this even further. <laughs> we can, we like, uh, we can get this better. How can we do this? We can drop this loss rate even lower, and then we can put 500 agents in there, and then we can increase this to 128, and we can increase this to 64. Because why not? And so let's run these. Here's a loop. It's going to go through again. It's going to take about 33 seconds. The last time it took 33 seconds. Uh, and then the big thing to showcase here, what I'm doing with these changes is I'm, I'm dramatically increasing the power. And then so you can see by, a four, by epoch 14, we're already at 0.5, right? Uh, and then uh, 0.36, like 0.1 would be 99%. Uh, and then so uh, we're getting already like really close down. Like we're not going to, it's not going to convert better. It's gonna only going to get worse and worse, right? So like at this point, what I should do is actually lower the amount of epochs. Because uh, we already hit like very quickly in there, uh, like the best results, right? And then so this is actually going to be like if I ran this for 15 epochs as opposed to 50, this would actually come out better. Uh, and then let's see what happens here. Boom, miss seven, nine, misses there, miss there, but it's transposing those, hit that on, and then a lot of times it's before, right? Like, and then so this would be again even better. This result would be even better if I ran it for less epochs. If I had cut it with 15 when it was getting like really up there, I, this would be perfect. Uh, and then so showcasing this to you, like this is um, what the attention mechanism is meant to do, right? Like without an attention mechanism, we're getting bad results here. Uh, and then if we uh, are setting up a low attention mechanism, we're getting very horrible results. But so why would I use this and what we're looking at here as opposed to your standard attention mechanism? And the bottom line is, is that this is so much more computationally efficient that it isn't even funny. The bottom line with your standard attention mechanism is that it scales, scales quadratically. Whereas this scales linearly, and there is absolutely no comparison between the two. What does that mean specifically? So scaling quadratically. Let's say when we go up here and we make these adjustments in our uh, training in here, right? So I, I essentially I doubled everything. I went from uh, 32 to 64. I went from 128, uh, 64 to 128, and and, and I went like. Uh, a 10x increase here, right? All right, from 50 to 500, uh, and then a 10x increase here as well. And then so for every one uh, epoch increase, essentially, so going from like 32 to 64, going from uh, like 10 to 100, et cetera, that would scale the complexity of a normal attention mechanism by 4x. Because with a normal attention mechanism, every single part of it has to be connected. Right? So if I have 64 uh, embedding layers and 128 of my total of my hidden size, these all have to connect, no matter what. No matter what these numbers are, they all have to be connecting. Whereas with this, this is the default number, right? No matter what these numbers are set to, this will always stay the same. <laughs> and so that 
in and of itself allows me to get uh, computational levels and decrease the computational complexity to levels that a standard attention mechanism could only ever dream of. And then, so what does this mean overall? This means that, uh, I mean, this is a very classic problem with uh, scaling parameters in LLM models, right? And the more that we scale the parameters, the more that, uh, the more obviously the attention mechanism becomes. This eliminates and solves the problem 100%. I think it's awesome to answer and ask is like, why haven't people explored this specifically, right? So I've spent a lot of time diving into this, and swan algorithms are like kind of my baby, right? Uh, and there's a reason behind all of that. I think a reason behind why this hasn't been explored. So when swarm algorithms were in their heyday, this was the uh, mid 90s to early 2000s. And to put it quite bluntly, computers sucked then. <laughs> they were not uh, a running a computer, running a swarm algorithm on a computer from the mid 90s to the mid 2000s is completely different than running it on a computer today. And uh, I can break it down into a simplistic term for you. So let's say that uh, your CPU or your GPU is a giant cube. And just we'll say it's uh, a 64 by 64 cube. <laughs> and that's your GPU or your CPU, right? And then so for any computer in the mid-90s to early 2000s, it would always be a block. Like you, just one, one huge block. And there'd be no way to, to split that cube up. But in modern computers, what I can do is take that big cube and I can make it 16 smaller cubes, 32 smaller cubes, 64 smaller cubes, 128 smaller cubes, whatever the size of the cubes that I need. And they all combine to form that same big cube, but I can break the cube up, which is a dramatic difference in compute power and what you can do and how these swarm algorithms operate. Uh, they were like a novelty in the, in the 90s and the 2000s because I couldn't do this. And then so I think that, I mean, to me, you th that's the heyday, right? People figure out you can do this, and then there's a lot of limitations. And then so people just start abandoning swarm algorithms, swarm-based algorithms, and abandon all this for a long time. And then all of a sudden, we figure out that we can just scale up the complexity of parameters. But now we're back here, right? And then so I go back here, and I go back to this, uh, and then, I mean, all I have to do is couple this with modern advancements, and uh, I'm having a film game. And so uh, I'll leave a link to this this uh, notebook, to the research paper, and everything associated with it, just showcasing and documenting this. Uh, I mean, this is, if you understand what's going on here, like I can't break it down any more simplistically than this. You know, you're getting the full benefits of an attention mechanism uh, without having to scale, scale quadratically. So I think this solves the, to me, the Biggest problem, a uh, mathematical problem that we're faced with in the today, and it's solved and you're looking at it. So if you like this stuff content, please like and subscribe. Thank you much.